people, people We the people would like you to know That wherever you go, we're right by your side Thank you guys so much for tuning back in to We The People. My name is Derek Butler. Earlier this month, I was able to travel to Lansing, Michigan to meet with Joelle Jones, the youngest state representative in Michigan's history, and also, interestingly, the youngest African-American elected to any position here in our country. It was amazing to connect with him, to learn a little bit about his story, uh, what he looks to do in the future, and some of the great things that he's doing for District 11 in Michigan, which includes his hometown of Inkster. Uh, like I said, I was able to meet him in his office in Lansing. So let's listen to the interview. So I'm Joel Jones. Uh, currently, I am a college senior, getting ready to graduate, um, state representative for the state of Michigan. Um, I'm in the National Guard, ROTC cadet, senior deacon at my church, um, concerned citizen. Back in 2014, I was at the Congressional Black Caucus Conference in DC in the youth workshop and they talked about taking it to the next level. And uh, I just seen like all these young people from like all over the US and it just seemed like it was the right time to get involved, you know? And so I think the sea was continuing to get watered. And I got back home to Inkster and people were like, oh yeah, you should run for city council. And my city council member, Michael Canty, he was ready to, you know, step out of the position and do some other things. And uh, so, you know, we were joking around. I was like, yeah, you know, I can be the councilman. Uh, he called me a few days later, gave me some paperwork. I went and talked to the city clerk, got my signatures, got on the ballot, and then we just ran this campaign. Um, and ever since then, things have been rocking and rolling. And so, like, I'm definitely, like, I'm not even a politician, I'm a public servant. That's like how I like to uh, brand it because like really like if it wasn't for the people like telling me to run, like I wouldn't have done this, but you know, I've fallen in love with politics because it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to really help out um, where people have been forgotten over the years. You know, I believe it's like, it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity, especially for, I think a young black male, you know, like, uh, for me, I guess when I first got here, especially even coming from city council um, and from other offices, like coming to this office and having like this view and, and just slowly like realizing, um, I mean like the gravity of the situation, you, you feel me? Like the impact that we can make in the platform that we have. So I, I realized like I'm a Democrat in a Republican uh, controlled state. And so from a legislative standpoint, uh, I see myself getting a few bills uh, through, um, but I'm not really, not really forcing some of the. I have some primary bills that I want to get through. So those I see coming through, like things regarding sexual assault on college campuses, criminal justice um, reform, specific like prevention um, and education, uh, some cybersecurity things. Then I have some other some other stuff that I'm sure we might be able to get through, but it's not a, a major focus. Uh, but I guess my, my main target that I would like to hit is just really getting some, some dollars back to the community. Um, that's what I would like to do. And so I'm just waiting for the budget to wrap up at the end of May. Um, and it's looking good. I've been talking to my folk, um, made, some, made some strong relationships uh, with the, the appropriations chair and vice chair. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting some dollars back just for my folk back home. At 22 years old, Joel is the youngest state representative in the Michigan House. I wanted to know what it was like to work with seasoned individuals. Are they welcoming and treat him as a colleague? Or do they kind of treat him as a novice and a youngster of the group? So like when I told you like I wanted to be a spy, so like my whole thing is um, like this relationship building and networking standpoint. And so I just try to find like areas where I'm similar with folk. And so I think, and then I think areas where I'm different helps out too, because I mean, I'm talking to people from, from West Michigan, up north in the UP, um, a little Southern Michigan, more Southern than me uh, in Michigan, then on the East side of Michigan. And uh, I think like people who have been, you know, so used to just their own territory, like I'm here now and it hasn't really been like, there's been some other young brothers out here, but it hasn't really been like somebody like as young as me. And so I think it's like a, it, it spurs a conversation. Um, 
from amongst us. And so they've been very welcoming. I'll be inviting me out to the, like their houses and stuff like that. You know, I tell them I'm gonna come, but like some of them stay like eight, nine hours away. So it's like, you know, bro, I'm gonna come one of these weekends, we're gonna have to plan it out. But that's not just, <laughs> that's not just something I wake up and, you know, take an eight, nine hour drive for and still be in Michigan. Although Joel's career is just kind of beginning, I wanted to know what was the most meaningful or the best thing that he has accomplished so far? I think from I think from an inspirational uh, standpoint, that's probably like the most uh, profound like effect that it even had on me. Like when I just go to um, schools, whether it's like an elementary school, whether it's a middle school or a high school, or I'm like at a college and just like seeing like you know I'm like I'm just chilling, right? Like my whole life I've been thinking things have been expected, so you know I'm here and I'm like. Well, you know, I got work to do, but like going and like connecting with like these young folk and stuff and just like seeing like, like when we just walk in the room, we just start talking to them, we just like hanging with them and just vibing, like just to see how like excited they are. Um, like that's what keeps me going, like that's what fuels the fire because now I'm seeing like this entire uh, generation of change, like right now, like getting involved and they're ready to go. Um, and so I think just, that, you know, being a part of the movement, like being on the forefront of the movement, that's been probably like my, one of my greatest accomplishments that we really getting this thing going. Uh, so this this night, city council, I remember when I was, when we were on we state rep, um, I like went to sleep, man. You know, that was the that was the, <laughs> that was the Donald Trump election, and so. Uh, so like, did you know that you won prior to the presidential election, or was it like? So like so I knew I knew that we we know that we won, we won right so like it's God right so like I don't think God gonna put me nowhere where we're not gonna win so you know I was optimistic I went to sleep before all the results were in which you know, I was just <laughs> I seen like how the and we were going like all these watch parties for the presidential election and I was seeing how things were going I was like well we know who won the presidential election so I was just like I just went ahead and went to sleep you know I was like uh, but I would end up waking up at like four in the morning. And then like my phone, my phone like blowing up and people like putting all these pictures and stuff up. And so then I was just like, I was still chilling. Cause like I said, like, I think everything's supposed to be like ex expected in life. But um, like it was, it was exciting to see like everything, like just waking up and, and seeing like this inundation of just like notification message from people like saying congrats. Like, and they knew before I did, since I was like knocked out, um, like it, it, was, it was an exciting feeling. I don't know. I think it's just my mindset, you know. It's like uh, I think anything is possible. So, like I think I can have any superpower. Like I can fly. I can have super strength. Or I can like I can't sing, but I can probably sing off of my mind to it, right? I, I think like anything is possible. Like I'm like this completely like optimistic person. So I think when you ask me about superpowers, like I can have anyone at any given time. My role model. Uh, it's really. It's not any particular person I mean uh, I've always said it's like everybody because like being being in the role I'm in like I get a chance to talk to so many different folks um, and whether it's like the, the babies up to like you know my adopted uh, grandparents in the community uh, like I learned so much from everyone you know, I think it's something you could take away from each and every person Although I knew he would not answer this question directly I wanted to ask it anyway and figure out what was next for him. So uh, definitely, I mean, I don't, I don't like saying what's next right. only because of, like I don't wanna put any limits on there because of how like it's happened so far. Like we ran, I just woke up one morning um, when everything was in place after everyone had been in my ear for city council, I made a Facebook post that I'm running for city council, blew up, city council happened, state rep happened. Um, so, you know, it's really like, I don't want to have any predictions. I'm just enjoying the motion. You know, God passed me an alley-oop. You know, I'm just going to dunk it. I have dubbed 2017 the year of millennial impact. It's some amazing young people doing great things, not only in their neighborhoods and communities, but our country as a whole. Um, so I wanted to know what word of advice would he give to other millennials or younger people who are looking to do the same thing that he's doing, make an impact in their communities and take it to the next level. Level. I would definitely say like it's time to get off the sidelines. Uh, but so it's all about relationship building. Like that's something I harp on all the time. Uh, especially being like young folk, you know, we have like this vibrant smile and uh, we have like all these friends and 
uh, the movement is here because of like the recent election and other things like the atmosphere is geared towards involvement and engagement and so right now it's like the opportune time to get involved and so but all you have to do you have to, you have to get started though so now I'm like I, I know I ran to a lot of young people when they came up to me after like we won the election asking us like how to do it and they've been telling us like well, you know I've been thinking about running for so long I just didn't know how to do it but like you don't have to know how to do it like you can be a work in progress and a masterpiece at like the same time so like don't don't like sit back and just have like these ideas in your head and not act on them so like really just just jump out there and, and the rest to come you know just be passionate about it keep your nose clean because you know you, we already have like we got a target on our back um, so just make sure you're not doing nothing that anybody can can pull anything from uh, but it's right now is the time and just you just get out there you know say something so we can hear uh, but the movement is definitely here and, and not only in politics but I mean whatever you can imagine like there's people here that want to help so just just reach out I had to close the interview and ask about Flint, Michigan. It seems that a lot of people have kind of forgotten about what's going on there in reference to the poisoned water. So I wanted to know specifically from someone in the state government, what are they doing to correct this wrong? So with Flint, so there was a hundred, the federal government sent a $100 million uh, supplemental to go to Flint, but that's come through like the state government. So we passed through the house, um, it went through the Senate. Well, it was an issue in the in the place, in the city called Fraser, in Fraser, Michigan, when they had a sinkhole. So there was a three dollar, three million dollar um, grant that was added for them. But we sent it over to the state Senate. They didn't like the three million dollar grant, so they turned to a five million dollar loan. Um, and then it was still a hundred million dollar supplemental to go to Flint. But they sent it back to the House, and then they went on break per se, right? Um, the House didn't like that plan, um, so, so um, basically like, it's been sitting there. The money's been sitting there for a month that's supposed to go to Flint. Now is $100 million nice? Is it beneficial? Yes. But when we're talking about um, lead and pipes, we're talking about infrastructure. And so I think Michigan has dropped the ball over the years in infrastructure, not even just the pipes, but um, with the underground infrastructure, but roads. Um, and so where's the money going to come from now? Um, to really, like when we're talking about really, um, we can patch up the issue with this hundred million dollars. But when we're talking about really like turning turning something around, uh, it has to be an entire infrastructure upgrade. And there's just not money for that right now. And so um, while there's being steps made in the right direction, you know, keep, keep on praying. Cause, <laughs> cause it is, I mean, especially, Especially how the whole situation like occurred when you put in, like profit over people like you would think that they would do everything in their power like to fix the situation um, But you know, you know what we're dealing with right. so <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope that you truly enjoyed it Be sure to connect with us on social media on Facebook and Twitter at be hopeful people and our new website, BeHopefulPeople.com. If you're looking at this video online, Facebook, Twitter, our website, why don't you share it? Why don't you like it and leave us a comment just to let us know that you're there. We hope that we see you next week as I sit down and interview Danal Wilmer, an educator in Baltimore, Maryland, who created a nonprofit organization called Boys in the Good. It targets African-American young men and provides them with mentors and programming outside of school. We hope to see you next week and remember, be hopeful people. <laughs>